Hey everyone, it's Rochelle and welcome back to my channel. So I am back with another video for you guys and today I'm going to show you guys how I made this wig from start to finish. So I'm going to show you guys how I made the wig, how I color it, how I style it, everything. So if you want to see how I got it, then please continue to watch. Alright, so let's get started. So I'm using some 613 hair, so 613 that's blonde, and I'm using 12 inches, three bundles, and a frontal. All the hair info will be in the description bar down below, so you guys can go ahead and check that out. Now, to make your wig, you are going to need a wig canvas head, so one of these thingies right here. I've used the styrofoam heads before, and I honestly don't like it because it doesn't fit my head that well when I make a wig on the styrofoam heads. Um, the canvas heads does cost a bit more, but honestly, it's a good investment. Trust me and believe me when I say that. All right, so next you're gonna need a wig cap. I know, this is so blurry, you can't even see it. <laughs> but this is what the wig cap looks like. And um, this is a dome mesh cap. This is what I use to make all of my wigs. I freaking love these. They stretch and they fit really good. So I love making my wigs with these. All right, so I'm gonna have this random girl step in my video. This is my daughter, Tadea, and she is just gonna be my model for measuring head. So before, if you're new to making wigs, the first thing you wanna do is know your measurements. So you wanna measure your head. I'm using Tania as my model today. Mm -hmm. And do not mind my hand, you guys, because I have dye all over my hand because I did this part of the video after I colored the hair, so I included her. So the first thing you wanna do is measure. So you wanna measure from ear to ear, just like what I'm doing right now. And you also wanna measure the circumference of your head, so all the way around. And you also wanna measure from front to back. She has a bun <laughs> that she did not wanna take out, so it was a little hard. She was not the best model. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no, she was a great model. But yeah, you wanna do from front to back also. So that's how you measure your head before. You wanna measure that and then measure your mannequin head and make your wig. So now we're gonna put the wig cap onto the mannequin head. And this is the wrong way. You don't wanna pull the wig cap down like this or else your wig is gonna look crazy. It's not gonna fit on your head properly. So this is the absolute wrong way. The right way to apply the wig cap is just like this. So I put the wig cap on and I don't pull it all the way down. I pull the back down and just like, kind of like how you'd put it on your head. You don't wanna put it all the way down because then it's gonna cover your freaking eyes and eyebrows. It's gonna look crazy, right? <laughs> so this is a part that I don't include in a lot of my videos. I measure the wig cap on the mannequin head before I make my wig. So I always measure the front to back. I already know my measurements. So I know from front to back it's 14 inches. I wanna make sure that the back is pulled down to 14 inches before I start making the wig. This is just gonna make sure that this wig fits my head properly. As for the circumference on the mannequin mannequin head it's already 21 inches it's just like my head so I know I'm gonna get a good fit there okay so now that we know our measurement we can move on to making the wig so I'm gonna put the frontal onto the wig cap and this is just the wrong way of doing it you want to make sure you pull down that frontal just an inch um, you can pull it down further if you have a bigger forehead I don't really have a lot of forehead space so I try not to pull mine down too much I like it just pulled down just by a little inch, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my T-pins into the frontal to keep it in place before I start sewing. Yeah, so just make sure that you are pinning down the sides and the top. Now the front part of the frontal is going to look a bit crazy. It's gonna look crazy until the wig is completed, okay? That part usually freaks me out. I'm like, why does it look so crazy in the front? Is this how my wig is gonna be looking in the front? Trust me, that's what I used to think, like it's gonna look jacked up, but trust me, it won't. <laughs> so hi Simba, just always in everything. So you're gonna need some thread and you're going to need some needle. Today I'm using a blonde thread. You can use black thread. It, I don't wanna say it doesn't matter, but I'm working with a lighter hair color, so I don't want the thread to be seen when I make the wig. So the needle that I'm using, it's a weave needle and it's one that looks like a hook. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and sew down that frontal. The reason why I don't have it on my wig stand is because I really want you guys to see it, how I stitch it down. So I start off from the middle and then I work my way all the way down to the sides. Like it's really simple to be honest with you. It is, it's really simple, it's really easy. Um, I've been sewing since I was a kid, so I guess I've had some practice there. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna really make some really nice, neat stitching. Make sure it's neat because you don't want it to be lumpy and bumpy and 
your wig feels bulky and all that so just sew it down really neat as possible and yeah I'm all the way at the end and once I get to the end I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and cut that thread and when I cut the thread I like to make like two knots so I make a double knot and then I go ahead and I cut the excess thread just because I don't want anything unraveling and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side as well so make sure you sew down both sides Okay, so the frontal is all sewn down. So now we're gonna have to sew some hair onto this wig cap to complete this entire wig. So I'm gonna go in with my first track of hair and I'm just gonna use my T-pin and pin it down into place. And now I'm gonna start sewing. So same thing, get your needle and thread and just start sewing, making sure that these stitches are nice and flat. That way you don't have any bumps in your wig and it doesn't look bulky. And again, once I reach the end of the track, I go ahead and I cut that thread. So make sure you cut the excess thread, tie a knot and cut the excess part again. Now I'm doing the fold over method. I do this with every single one of my wigs. I always fold over my tracks. That way I'm not cutting up all the tracks and because when you cut the tracks too much, that's when you run into the problem of the hair shedding. So just do the fold over method. And I'm just gonna continue doing the fold over method until I get closer to the top. All right, now if you have absolutely no patience when it comes to sewing, because it is a bit time consuming, some people are a lot faster than some. I mean, when I first started, I was super, super slow, but I've gotten faster at actually sewing the wigs. I think it takes me like two hours. Before it would take me like eight hours. Like, girl, what? Eight hours to sew a wig? I was struggling but if you don't want to sew you could also do the glue gun method I've never done that on my channel but if you guys want to see that um, comment down below and I'll definitely do that for you so as you can see I'm getting closer to the top so I actually went ahead and I cut the track so I'm not doing the fold over method anymore I'm going straight across now so just the same thing as before go straight across and then stitch the hair down I'm gonna speed up this part because it's very very repetitive so yes finally we are down to our last track hey Tanea <laughs> so yeah the wig is pretty much completed this is what the completed wig is looking like she's looking real cute but she's not done yet okay so we have all this excess wig cap under our wig we need to cut that out because you don't want to put your wig on and all you're seeing is this black cap that it's not gonna look right so we have to cut that part out now you can use this as a band on your wig my wigs fit so perfectly on my head you guys I don't even need to put a wig band in it like it just fits properly so I only use a wig band whenever it's a little too big for my head but it fits perfectly fine now we're gonna go ahead and do some coloring today I'm gonna be using Arctic Fox neon moon I love 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 this color and I'm gonna use kiss color limelight so I'm gonna be mixing these two hair dyes together to get this gorgeous lime green shades. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my mixing bowl and mix it all together. All right, so moving right along before we color the wig, we're gonna go ahead and protect that lace and make sure we don't get any stains all over it because if you get your wigs, I mean your lace stain, it can be a freaking pain and it just mess up the whole look of the lace. You don't wanna get it stained, so I'm just applying Vaseline all over it. You can also use the Got To Be Free Spray to do this as well. All right, so now that my lace is protected, we're gonna move on to coloring the wig. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the color all over the hair. And just make sure you apply it all over the hair and go in with your fingers just to distribute it all over. Now this is pretty simple. I'm not doing anything complicated today. Uh, it's just one color. And I did something similar to this already, almost the same thing actually for my slime green wig. The only difference with the color is that this one has a bit more yellow in it. My slime green wig actually had a bit more green and I kind of didn't want to film this because I did something similar already but I knew the cut and the style would be different so that's why I filmed this video for you guys. Um, I did the watercolor method with my slime green wig which you can also do but um, I find that watercolor method is kind of uh, unpredictable. Sometimes you have to keep dipping the hair in the watercolor with the dye and sometimes you end up with a darker shade that you don't want. Um, so that's why I don't, I mean, I don't want to say I hate the watercolor method because I do like it because it's quicker and faster, but I feel like it's a little bit unpredictable sometimes if you get what I'm saying. Okay, so the dye job is pretty much completed and I'm gonna leave this on for about 30 minutes and then wash it all out. Now I'm gonna move on to tweezing. If you want the hairline to look, you know, somewhat natural, I say natural, like we have lime green hair, I'm, I'm talking about natural, right? 
Anyways, I still want my hairline to look good, you know. Um, so I'm going to go in with my tweezer and I'm going to start tweezing away. And I'm tweezing behind the hairline. So don't go tweezer crazy and end up with bald spots. Just take your time with it and just tweeze behind the hairline if you're not really sure. And then I'm going to go in with my blow dryer and start blowing her out because we are going to get her ready, okay? We're going to get her ready for styling. So I'm really loving how the color turned out. So this is actually the true color of the hair, you guys. I filmed this part during the daytime. When I did my intro, it was actually at nighttime. So this is the true color. I had to work with more lighting. So now I'm going to go in with my scissors and start cutting this hair listen I am NOT a professional okay I'm just you know trying and I cut the hair and then I'm gonna go in with my shearing scissors as well is it shearing scissors no shearing combs and I'm gonna go ahead and start um, thinning out the hair because it's a lot of hair okay and it was really bulky so I had to go ahead and thin out the back so I'm going in with that comb just to make it Thin, so I don't want no bulky bulky wig because that's not gonna look cute <laughs> so I had to try it on make sure that I was happy with the length and I liked it but I wanted it to be a little bit shorter so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it a little bit shorter and the back is still pretty choppy so I do have to do a bit more cutting in the back and using my shearing comb so it doesn't look super choppy now as for this wig, I used three bundles and a frontal and that's a lot of hair for short hair. You can actually use two bundles and a frontal, but I didn't really uh, space out my wefts a lot. They're really close together. So that's why I end up using so much hair, which made the hair a lot thicker. But if you don't want it to be super thick, you can definitely use two and it would work. So now I'm going to go in with my flat iron. I absolutely love the length. It's perfect well I won't say perfect but I like the length of it it's pretty good I'm happy with it so I'm just gonna go in with the flat iron and straighten it and I use some hair serum the one that I use it's by um, ions hair serum it's the only thing I really use in my hair I don't really use a lot of products and then as for the front I wanted to style that off um, when it's on my head and I went in with my hot comb just to make sure it's nice and flat at the top So it's not looking bulky because nobody wants no bulky wig. I'm so extra but guys look at that uh, stiff wear <laughs> So yeah, my wig is now on my head. I applied off camera. I do have very detailed videos on how I apply my wigs. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just style the front part of it. I can't do the front until it's on my head because I need to see where I wanna do my little flippy thingy, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, this is pretty much the completed hair. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Comment down below, let me know what you guys wanna see next and I'll see you in another video very, very soon. I love you guys so much and thank you for watching.